Right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to this uh, virtual community meeting regarding the upcoming Hanley and Central Meadowbrook area street reconstruction project. My name is Greg Robbins, and I'm a project manager with the City of Fort Worth's Transportation and Public Works Department. Uh, on the call as well, our representatives from the Fort Worth Water Department and the engineering consultant, they'll be around after at the end of the presentation to help answer questions if needed. Um, one other quick note before we get started, if you received a mailer for another water and sewer improvement project in your area that's scheduled for the 19th, it is a separate project from this one, so go ahead and attend that meeting as well. All right, so this presentation is meant to, meant to provide you with some information about the scope of this project and that's happening in your area and give the community the opportunity to provide input or make suggestions or to ask questions about the project and how they're going to be impacted by the construction. So here's the agenda of what I hope to cover in my brief presentation. Um, I'll be talking about the project as a whole and then providing a summary of the improvements on each street associated with the project. And I'll discuss the expected schedule moving forward as we finish up the design and move into construction. And I'll block off some time at the end for uh, questions or community use. It pan twice. I mean, it's. So first we'll talk about the overall scope of the improvements associated with the project. This project is part of the 2018 bond and due to the number of streets associated with the project, it was broken up into two contracts. We have contract eight and contract nine and I'll just I'll say which streets are in each contract. Uh, separating the streets into two contracts allows for uh, quicker design time as well as uh, construction progress since the, street, the construction times for the projects can be staggered and both be under construction at around the same time. So in contract eight, we have six streets and if you look in the in the map there on the right side of the screen, um, the numbers on each uh, next to each street uh, correspond with the, the street names that are on the left. So uh, number oh, one, we have Craig Hanley to Major Street. Uh, number two, Cravens Road from Meadowbrook Drive to Greenlee Street. We have Halbert Drive from Route Street to Church Street. Uh, also Halbert Drive from Beatty Street to Craig Street. We have Hightower Street from Grandview Drive to Weiler Boulevard, number five. And then finally, we have Major Street from Route Street to Craig Street. So those are the streets that are associated with, uh, with Contract 8. Uh, this is Contract 9. So we have uh, Benton Avenue from Old Hanley Road to South Hampshire Boulevard. House Street from Panola Avenue to the cul-de-sac. Windomere Street from Benton Avenue to Springfield Street. And finally, Venata Lane from Emily Drive to Weiler Boulevard. And you'll notice it's broken up into a couple of pieces and we'll talk about why that is uh, when we get to Venata specifically. The next few slides show the existing conditions of these streets and why they were slated for reconstruction. You can see from the pictures, the issues that we we're gonna be correcting um, we have damaged asphalt pavement, missing curbs and gutters, damaged or missing sidewalk, damaged or missing driveways, as well as uh, water and sewer improvements uh, under the street. Uh, utilities that need to either be replaced or need to be upsized to uh, expand capacity. These pictures are here to give you an idea of what you can expect the new street to look like when we're done. So we have a uh, new asphalt pavement with new concrete curbs and gutters, new concrete paved driveways, um, new sidewalks and new uh, ADA wheelchair ramps where they're needed. And also of course, not shown in the pictures, but underneath the street we have, we're gonna be uh, providing new water and sewer uh, pipes, um, water and sewer mains, including water and new service lines to the houses and meters and clean outs. So I'll go through each street individually uh, for each contract and discuss the improvements that we're expecting to, uh, to make on each one. So uh, these are the streets in contract eight. On Craig Street, we're gonna be uh, providing new asphalt street with new concrete curbs and gutters, uh, new concrete driveways with a minimum of 11 foot width, 
and approximately uh, 10 foot in length back to the right of way line. Um, on Craig Street, we're going to be installing a five foot sidewalk on one side of the road, and it does alternate. It starts on the south side of the road right now as you're moving from, from Hanley going east, and it crosses the street at approximately Lewis Street to the north side. Um, we'll also be replacing uh, the existing 10 inch sewer line, the existing eight inch sewer line, as well as upsizing the existing six inch water to eight inch. On Cravens Road, um, new asphalt street, new concrete curbs and gutters, new concrete driveways, and we'll be installing five foot sidewalk on the west side of the street. And when I say five foot sidewalk, that's five foot width. Um, also, we'll be upsizing the existing six inch sewer to eight inch and replacing the existing eight inch water main. On Halbert Drive, this is the section from Beatty to Craig. Um, once again, new asphalt streets, and that's going to be the same for every street uh, associated with this contract. New asphalt streets with new concrete curbs and gutters, um, new concrete driveways, and it will be receiving a uh, five foot sidewalk on both sides of the road. In addition, we'll be upsizing the existing six inch sewer to eight inch and upsizing the existing six inch water to eight inch. Uh, the second section of Hopper Drive from route to church, um, once again, new asphalt streets, new concrete curbs and gutters, new driveways and a uh, sidewalk on the west side of the road on this section. And we'll also uh, be upsizing the existing water and sewer from six inch to eight inch. On Hightower Street, uh, new asphalt streets, new concrete curbs and gutters, new concrete driveways, and a five-foot sidewalk on both sides of the street. Um, there's no sewer improvements associated with Hightower Street, but we are going to be upsizing the existing four-inch water to eight-inch. On Major Street, um, the only paving improvements uh, will be a new asphalt street. The existing curb and gutter is in pretty good condition. Um, but we will be upsizing the existing six inch sewer to eight inch and upsizing the existing six inch water to eight inch. All right, so these are the improvements associated with the streets in contract nine. So on House Street, uh, new asphalt street, new concrete curbs and gutter, new driveways, and upsizing the existing water and sewer from six inch to eight inch. On Benton Avenue, uh, we'll, we'll be replacing the asphalt street, uh, providing new concrete curbs and gutters, reconstructing concrete driveways, and also upsizing the existing water and sewer from six inch to eight inch. On Windomere Street, um, we'll be providing new as a new asphalt street, new concrete curbs and gutters, new concrete driveways, and upsizing the existing water and sewer from six inches to eight inches. Um, on Van Atta Lane, uh, new asphalt street, new concrete curbs and gutters, new concrete driveways. We're going to be installing a five foot sidewalk on both sides of the street. And we're going to be removing the fence that is that runs perpendicular across the street between Emily in Grandview. That's why it's shown as separate sections uh, in the first page, but we're going to be taking that fence out and providing a continuous uh, road between Emily and Grandview. So uh, also we'll be replacing the existing uh, eight inch sewer and upsizing the existing six inch water to eight inches. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the project schedule uh, moving forward. So for contract eight, and I've listed the, the streets associated with contract eight here, um, we're currently at about 60% design, which means we're about halfway through. We're expecting to receive our 90% design from the consultant um, at the beginning of 2021. Um, once we, we're at final design, we're hoping to advertise for bids from contractors in the spring. And once we have a winning bidder, contractor, we hope to get council approval by the end of summer and start construction uh, late summer, early fall. Um, 
we expect the construction to take approximately a year, so we have a, an end date of around September of 2022 to finish construction. So these are for the streets on contract eight. For contract nine, it's a little further along in design. So we already have 90% plans from the consultant. We are expecting to receive 100% plans by the end of the year. And hopefully we'll be able to advertise for bids uh, in January, February, early next year and receive bids and, and be able to award a, a contract to a contractor um, sometime in the spring. If we can get that done, that means we'll start construction sometime around the beginning of summer. And once again, we expect this project to take about a year to complete. So we're looking at summer of 2022 to finish construction. So this is our tentative schedule for both projects. Um, it is based a little bit on our ability to get franchise utilities located and relocated prior to construction start. But uh, this is how our anticipated schedule at this time. All right, so we've come to the end of the, of the presentation. So we're gonna move into the, the questions and input portion of the presentation. So I noticed that there's already a couple questions in the chat. So we'll, we'll, we'll take those first and then we will go to any questions that we have on the phone. Thanks, Greg. Uh, first question, uh, as, as I understand it, sidewalks on Craig will be on the south side from Handley to Lewis. Is that correct? Uh, yes. As of right now, that's where the, the sidewalk is is shown on the south side of the road from Hanley to Lewis, and then it uh, crosses over to the north side. Okay, and that follows up uh, with the second question, which is there's a several hundred year old oak tree about three feet from the driveway and five feet from the street. Uh, how will you avoid damage to it? It's about five feet from the street. It, um, uh, that's what, the yeah, that's what it's on the south side. I'll, I'll check the plans at that particular address. Uh, if you can put your address, I can check the plans and see what we're going to do about that tree. We're going to try to save as many trees as we can. He says north side, correct? On the north side? Okay, well, if you're, if it's five feet away from the street, then I don't, I don't, if we don't have the sidewalk on that side, then I don't imagine that it'll be impacted. He said no more chat um, no, no more chat questions at this time. Okay, so I guess we can. Uh, oh, we got one more coming in. Hold on. More chat question, okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see that I had a, a chat question come. Uh, come to me uh, privately and it's a question about installing uh, driveways and how far the driveways will be installed um, up your current driveway. Um, so the answer to that is we'll be installing driveways up to the up to the edge of the city's property line. So it, it, it varies a little bit on each street and I don't know uh, uh, which street you're referring to, but um, it's approximately anywhere from eight to 10 feet from the back of the curb is about where the property line lands. Uh, there is another question about access to property via the, via the driveway at all times. Uh, can you talk mm -hmm. about how access will work? Uh, sure. Uh, for the most part, you'll have access to your property almost continually. There are a few exceptions, such as when the contractor is working directly in front of your driveway, um, which should be a temporary thing. 
and when your new driveway itself is being placed. So when, when your actual new concrete driveway is going to be replaced, and uh, you'll receive a notice from the contractor when that is, is going to take place because the concrete does take a, you know, a little while to cure. So you'll get notice from the contractor when that's going to happen, and so you can plan, plan accordingly during that time. Oh, I did okay, have one more one. question. Oh, do you have one? Do you have one? Come in private. Go ahead. Be privately. Um, it's a question about um, not having sidewalk currently in, in front of in front of your home, and if they're going to be added. Um, this is from. Um, if you can write in the chat what street you're on, I can uh, I can help you out with that question. Halbert. On Halbert. Uh, let me let me go back to Halbert here. Between Craig and Beatty. Between, okay. Yeah, Craig and Beatty. So this section of Halbert is getting a uh, sidewalk on both sides of the street. She said, thanks. Um, the next question, uh, Handley has a high level of fast traffic. When it is very bumpy, when smooth, it will likely get worse. Can we get a stop sign at Hunter? where the road angles and is difficult to see around the corner. On Hanley and Hunter. Okay, let me. Oh, so this would be at Craig and Hunter. So the city doesn't necessarily uh, use stop signs as a traffic calming measure. It's it's more of a uh, of a volume related issue. So a, uh, a a traffic study would have to be done. A traffic volume study would have to be done on that particular intersection uh, to see if a stop sign is warranted. Can we uh, can we request that that team take a look? Uh, yes, we can talk to traffic management about that and see if uh, if a traffic study is going to be performed there. Great. Uh, I, I do see uh, one other question. Uh, I have a sewer drain in front of my house and the drain is under my driveway. Is this to be replaced? Um, it depends on on which one it is. I don't know which street this is on, but some on some storm drains we are going to be replacing just the inlet top, and on others, if they're in really poor condition, we'll be replacing the inlet as a whole. I don't know exactly which which street uh, it is we're referring to or which inlets we're talking about. There aren't. Uh, there are not currently any more questions in chat. Okay. <clears throat> we do have one more. There's an existing curb in front of uh, their property on Benton Avenue that is in bad shape. Will it be removed and replaced with new curb? Yes. So we're going to be replacing all existing curb and gutters on all streets associated with this contract.
But there's uh, no new questions. Okay. If there's anyone uh, on chat who wants to actually just ask a question, doesn't uh, want to type it in, please feel free to unmute uh, at this time. Greg, I'm going to go ahead and we have uh, multiple call-in users. Um, I'm going to go okay. ahead and unmute them just in case they have any questions. Okay. Uh, I don't know that they have the option on their phone to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute all of them. Okay. Well, I've sent a request. Uh, they have to um, accept it if they, if they choose. Uh, here's a question. How long will this presentation be available for replay? Uh, and that's probably for me. Um, so once this, uh, once it's recorded, uh, we'll post it on our YouTube channel uh, and it's, it'll be there uh, for quite a long time, probably until the project is complete. Um, of course, if we have uh, any later meetings, those will be available as well. I'm going to mute myself for a second. I think a resident may be trying to call me directly. Also, everyone, while, while Greg is muted, uh, he'll put his contact information up again at the end. Uh, so if you do have questions that you think of later, uh, you can email him or give him a call. Um, once, uh, if you think of anything, and he'll, uh, he'll respond pretty pro promptly to you. Yeah, Jeff. I don't know if you were able to get it fixed, but they're saying that we can't, they can't unmute themselves. Uh, is that the call-in users? Okay. Uh, yes, on the call -in. That's, a, that's a new feature of WebEx. So we have to, we can only ask them to allow, uh, to allow them to unmute themselves. Uh, and let me try to unmute all and we'll see if that works. Okay. Yeah, 
it's still uh, telling me I've sent a request to, so they can unmute. Is there a code, if they're just a call-in user, is there a code they have to put in to unmute themselves? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay, am I unmuted? We can hear you. Oh, yeah. great. All right, yes. Uh, currently, I have a, uh, I have asphalt uh, that was put off in there in my driveway, and you said that you will be taking it up 11 feet. Um, is the minimum width and 10 feet is the uh, length. So uh, that would come all the way up past the past the uh, access area, uh, the drive, and it would go all the way up to how far. And how, what would I do as far as uh, installing that drive to meet all the way up to my house? Could I do any additions like that? So our our improvements they they do go back up approximately ten feet from the back of curb, um, you know, up towards your your garage or your uh, your, your parking space. Um, at that point, once we get to the end of the city property, yeah, any other improvements that you want to make um, would, would be would be on you to pay for. And uh, while while the contractor is there, you can talk to them about it. But we only provide new driveways up to our right-of-way line for the most part. All right. All right. And so, and so as far as, because like you said, you'll be taking out uh, the old existing curb and you'll be installing uh, uh, walkways, sidewalks. And this is on Halbert uh, Street again. On uh, Halbert? Between Craig, you know, between Craig and and uh, maybe. Okay, I think that was one that gets, yes. So there'll be sidewalks on both sides of the street. Okay. So how much of that would be the city? Because when I look on my, on my, uh, uh, on my plat, that basically it, it, that's part of, uh, that's, that's on the plat. Which part is on the plat? The sidewalk? Uh, all, yeah, all the way up to the curb. For some reason, or other, I, we, I got a crazy looking plat that uh, basically it has no structures actually on the property. But yet still, we're here. Okay. Um, I'd have to look at your address specifically. Um, do you mind telling me what address you're at? 2829 Halbert Street. 2829 Halbert Street. So you're saying that on your plat, your property goes all the way to the curb? Yes, that's what it, it has a list in that. I, you know, I thought it was kind of strange, but. Okay. Um, I'll have to take a look at that as far as what is shown in our plan and see if it matches what our uh, our consultant surveyor picked up. Okay. Sorry, I can't be more specific than that without looking directly at the at the property and the plan. Well, that's understandable. Oh, I found another chat question. Typically, city right away goes five feet beyond the pavement in our neighborhood. And you were on Greg Street. Craig Street. On Craig Street. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I was scrolling back up to the chat trying to find it. Um, so on Craig Street, uh, I, I'd have to look at the plans. The 10-foot 
is the, is the approximate length for all streets, uh, the, the width of the parkway. So between, uh, typically for all the streets associated with this contract, they're around nine to 10 feet from the back of the curb. Um, I'll take a look specifically at Craig Street to see if it's different for your property. Also, Greg, can you put the um, construction timeline back up? Sure. Specifically, uh, we're looking at Benton specifically. There it is. So for Benton, we're looking at starting construction um, I don't want to say specifically on Benton, but all the streets that are associated with this contract um, are looking to start approximately in the summer next year. Once we have a contractor on board and we know what his construction schedule is, then we'll have a better idea of when they're going to be getting to Benton Street in particular. But as of right now, uh, we just have an approximate timeline of when we expect to start construction and end construction. Were any of the other call-in users able to get themselves unmuted? It does not look like it. I'll do a little more. Re oh, we do have one. We do have one that got unmuted. Greg? Okay. Are you there? Is there Beverly Sam? Uh oh. Uh, yeah, I, I can hear you. Do you have two phones going in your yeah, he, room? There's he just turned, yeah, he turned it down. So, uh, okay. Okay. Um, the sidewalk is a kind of an issue too. I thought the sidewalks were to be on the north side, all the way from Hanley Drive to Major, because you were saving trees. Uh, well, from from Lewis to to Major, we switched it to the to the north side of the road. From that's Hanley our, to Lewis. That's our side. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That's our side. That's we have 470 feet starting there at Lewis, about Lewis, going east. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that. Is there any way to, to is there any way to change that? Uh, well, we we can take a look at it, but like I like I said, I believe that we moved it to that side of the road because there's trees and other things that we want to try to save on the south side of the street. But we can certainly take a look at it. Okay, saving trees. Okay, what about the? Uh, you know, we sent you uh, about eight questions last night. Are we? Are you going to talk to us tomorrow about those? Um, if there's, I, I can. If everyone wants to, I can kind of go through them real fast. It may be good information for everybody. Okay. Okay. So, read them off. All right. So, the, the first question was what utilities will be affected uh, and maintained during construction. So, we're referring to uh, uh, water and, and gas and, and things like that. So, um, utility services to homes will be maintained during the course of the project. So, while installing the new water pipe in the road, your home will be placed on like a temporary water during that time. Uh, your water service will only be briefly interrupted while there's a switch over. So you, and, but you'll be notified in advance before that occurs. Um, other franchise utilities in the street, such as uh, gas, electric, so Atmos, Encore, um, uh, those companies, they're currently, we're currently coordinating with them and so that they'll be moved out of the way prior to our construction and so they won't be disrupted as we, when we start breaking ground. Is there a new um, water a Is there a new water meter water main going in? New water main? On Craig? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, one reason, of course, we didn't get to log on. It's still invalid. So we didn't get to see your presentation, but you showed a picture, I guess, of Craig Street. Is that was one one of the pictures of Craig Street? Uh yes, I did. Uh you okay. mean in the uh the, the pictures of the streets? Are you talking about when I showed an overview picture? 
Were you able to ever see the president? We, no, no, we could never log on. It's an invalid number. We tried it every way oh, in the world. Okay. But one reason, one reason Craig looks like it does because all the main utilities run down there, and we're in the Woodbine Formation. You're probably familiar with that. This ground shifts, and uh, mm-hmm. there's just a repair. There's a big one down in front of our 6943 right now. There's a big leak, and they've got it flagged. But I guarantee you, you put in new water main line, it's going to rupture and it's going to break. So that's why one reason there's Kirk Street looks like this guarantee. Okay, I guess on to number two. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's been yeah. How will city services uh, fire water trash pickup be maintained during the construction? So our construction, and once we have a contractor, they'll be able to speak more to this and how they're going to phase it. But um, Usually during construction, they'll be phased in a way that the road will never be uh, completely shut down for a long period of time. Uh, emergency services will be able to access all the residents on the affected streets at all times, and uh, sanitation services uh, will continue during construction as well. Well, when, when they're out there and they're, they've poured concrete and there's forms up in the, uh, you know, what is it, the uh, uh, old uh, rebar and all that, how are they, how they going to drive their trash trucks over all that? Uh, well, it, it's the streets aren't going to be put back as concrete. They're going to be put back as asphalt. I know, but while they're being formed up, you know, they're going to dig it all out and put down, what is it, the the base and then carbon gutter, carbon gutter mm-hmm. and then there's going to be forms and there's going to be concrete being poured and it's all going to be torn up. How are the trash trucks going to get down the street? Well, until we actually do the the, the, the asphalt, the, the, the base, that they that they put down and they and they mix it and cement it and stabilize it. Um, you can you can still drive on that until we actually put down the asphalt. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look forward to seeing that, Greg. <laughs> Let's, I'm yeah, trying number, to keep a sense three, of humor here. Okay, number three uh, has already been addressed. Access to the okay. property. I've seen that where they have those wooden. What do they call them? Uh, what do you call them? Uh, two before, not eight. They'll just uh, put some base down. Yeah, they're going to put down the wooden things to drive over the water lines and things like that. Uh, steel, usually. Steel. Yeah, yeah. If, if a water line is open and and access is needed uh, across the street or a, a driveway or something, the contractor will put a, a steel plate down that you can drive across. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number four. Okay. Uh, will property owners be provided with a list of 24 emergency, uh, 24 hour emergency phone contacts, both city and contractor, in event that the utility city services access is not maintained? Uh, yes. Yeah. So we'll provide all the property owners with a 24 hour phone number that you can call for any issues uh, related to the construction. Okay. And when they don't answer, then what do we do? I guarantee I don't know you, what to tell you. They're not going to answer, Craig. They're not going to answer. I can guarantee you. Okay, here. We've been through this. Okay, okay. What, why, why were the limits of the project determined? How were they determined? Why did you stop at Major Street? Have you ever driven down Craig Street yourself? Yes, ma'am. Had, did you ever go way down behind the cemetery? To, the, to Sandy Lane. To Sandy Lane? I don't remember exactly how far I drove down. Well, I drove the uh, limits. Yeah, it's it's narrowed down, and there's there's bar ditches. Some of them are about four feet deep, and no shoulder. No shoulder. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. There's no curb. There's no gutter. It's just, uh, you know, just, this is an old country road. And so why why did it stop at major? How did that get determined? So the, this project, so both contracts and uh, uh, and all projects. Uh, are associated with the 2018 bond. Um, so we're, we're funded kind of as a package. And so it's a package of projects that were all funded by this bond money that was voted on in 2018. And the, so the project extents uh, of each street are bound by what was approved in the bond description. And to be, to be good stewards of the bond money, uh, we want to stay within the prescribed limits of, of what the bond described. Well, that that brings up another issue. How how were we supposed to know about this bond issue? You know, in the in the, at the you know we don't all take the paper anymore, and then there's just a piece of paper posted at City Hall, I guess, about all this construction that the city's 
eager to do? I mean, how, how were we supposed to know? I mean, on the 20, 2018 bond election, it doesn't, it doesn't say in all the, you know, when you go to vote, it doesn't list all the streets when you vote. And how, how were we to know? I mean, we can't go to City Hall every week and check, see what shenanigans are up to. Um, I'm going to ask Mary to help me with this question. Yeah. I think that's one yeah, thing. The city has not, uh, they, they failed in communication to the citizens of this, of this city. And, you know, I think it's a poor, I think it was a poor service to the citizens of this community. You know, this is kind of country out here. This is going to forever change this part of the city. We're kind of a country out here. And, and, uh, uh, I, I just want to know why they chose the city and I mean the street and then stopped it down here. And then the the worst part is it's still gonna be going on down here to the east of us. Uh ma'am, uh I'm sorry. So there is public meeting done uh before the twenty eighteen bond election and the bond list is on the city website. So um we 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 don't choose the street. It's the residents and the city council goes around, have town halls meeting and public meeting and present the street and present the limit for each district separately. So the only way for you to, to know which street is to attend this public meeting. And I think next year, they're going to have this 2022 bond. So I will, advise that you attend this public meeting and voice your request for any street or call the council member. But we usually, the list is take a year until it is finalized because all the meeting, the council member and everyone in the city like um, conduct for, for the people to know which street. And then but, but, the, how do you know there's going to be a bunch of how do we know when you're going to have this meeting and bond election? How, do, how, how does it get out into the public about this meeting? Well, they, 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 they send, uh, they put it on the city website, they send the mailers. Um, so we never we, got anything. We, we never got one thing. Um, I, I don't know, Jeff, didn't all the bonds in 2018, all the public meeting was presented to everyone and we tell them about it? So he's already been over there. He's already been over there. Um, okay. Yeah. There was. Uh, yeah, Mary. We've had we had multiple. I mean, we I think for the 2018 bond there were 24 separate meetings. Um, yeah. Two. Okay. Uh, at least two in each district, plus other plus other okay, we can, uh, we larger can, scale meetings. So. Uh, that's yeah. correct. So, we, um, we could okay, let, let me tell you. So, so it's, it's 2018. It's bond. So we cannot change the limit as long as people voted on it. We cannot change it at this point. So I will advise you for future bond, you get involved with the council member and uh, with everyone and ask for any street you want. So okay, that's how street. Thank, you. thank you very much. Let's go on to number. Uh, Greg, yeah, Greg, let's let 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 let's, let's just go to number seven here uh, on our list. Yeah. Uh, I'm not getting anywhere with that. Light. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm listening. Okay. Go to number seven, please. Project have a designated number of work days or it's going to have calendar days. So once we have a, a contractor on board, their contract with the city will have a, a designated number of calendar days to complete the project. I don't know exactly okay. how many it's going to be right now, but they will have a specific set day amount of days to finish. Okay. But it's calendar days. Yes, we do yeah. calendar days. Okay, is there a liquidated damages clause in most of the contracts? There in the is, case yeah. they complete. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch that. Uh, yes, we do have a liquidated damages clause in the contract. Okay, number eight, and I think you may have addressed this. Has any thought been given to restricting the traffic speed on Craig at the completion of the project? Because it's likely going to turn this thing into a racetrack once the streets better it did on Hanley Drive I know and you're doing the same thing so I know you addressed a stop sign at Hunter and Craig. Craig is that is that what you've got going or was that incorrect 
So um, once once the, the street is finished with construction and we have an idea of how the street is going to be used, we'll, we can do a traffic study or have our traffic management division do a traffic study and see if a stop sign is warranted anywhere on the street. Speed bumps? At this time, the city doesn't install speed bumps or speed humps. There are some on Rand Street off of East Lancaster. Does that mean that you had a project program to do that and then abandon it or what? Um, I believe previously we, we did install speed bumps and speed humps, but at this time we currently don't. Okay, so if at the completion, do you have any idea what a time frame would be for conducting a traffic study and installing any needed stop signs, et cetera? Like, are you asking how long the traffic study would last? No, what, what would kick off a traffic study? Would it be citizen complaints or is it just done as a matter of course? <clears throat> um, if, there, if there was a complaint, uh, yes, it could go to the traffic management division and they could request a, uh, a traffic study. Okay, so it's based upon citizen complaints then? Yes. Which department would we go to? Traffic. traffic. And then, if, do you have any idea how long it takes to get a traffic study implemented, completed, analyzed, and th then action taken? Um, I actually don't, don't know. Mary, do you know how long they usually take? Depending how many uh, requests they receive. So it's all dependent. And I will advise to wait until the street is complete because if they conduct a study now and not a lot of people yeah. using because of foundation, it, you need I to wait until that. the street is okay. Yeah. No, my question was about after the street's completed. If a complaint was registered, say, a week afterwards, how long do you think it would be before any action of any kind would be taken by the city? So they usually will, as soon as you put the request, they will contact you and tell you uh, when they can have an answer. So it's depending on the backlog of how many studies they going on at the same time. So, have you ever been involved in something like that? Yeah, I did one of my projects, um, but we they did a study. Uh, one of them took six months until we got a result. So some then, may take well, longer, the, some take less. Six months. What was the result? Yeah, the result on one, one of the projects, they put like um, flashing signs that tell you what is your speed limit. You know, some people react to this sign like when you are driving and you see that your speed is 40 miles per hour and you should be 30. Some people react to that. So they they, they testing something like that. So they, we did the study after we did the project and they recommended to put the signs and see how people will react. So they, they so tried what, several what, things, putting a stop sign what, or something. Yeah. What was the time frame between the complaint and the installation of those signs? Something around the six months to nine months, depending on the location. Um, so they were able to, to put the signs up because they have to conduct the study. They have to um, hire a contractor to install the signs and all of that. So it's not like something can be done in a week or something. They have to get the results over time, not like okay. one or two days. Uh, they, they have to conduct uh, it for a while. I understand. Uh, Beverly, you have yeah, more I, have, Beverly, I had a question for Greg, please. Yes, ma'am. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, is there uh, okay? Is there any uh, recourse at this point? Can we, can what is the appeal process? Can we get a petition up and get an appeal going to this construction on Craig Street? This is going to be it's going to be a holy nightmare. You know, we have four hundred four hundred seventy feet. An appeal to That's not our, do the project. Yeah, I, I would like to know what is the appeal process is uh, to, to perhaps get this postponed, put off, somebody look at it a little differently. 
that, you know, maybe just overlay it, just overlay it. Don't do all this other stuff. Is there an appeal process? So you mean to not do any of the utility work or the sidewalks or anything like that? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, that's. Yes. Yes. Um, I know you asked me specifically, but I've never had that question before. Harry <laughs> <laughs> or anyone else We're has had that question before. The problem is that's a project voted in the bond. We, I, the only one that can remove it from the bond is a council. All the council has to approve on that. So it's not like one council can remove a project from the bond. The whole mayor and council have to approve something like that to be removed from the bond. This is, this is not my, our <laughs> rule. This is the law. So this is voted by the public and it will need mayor and council approval. Um, to remove it from the bond. We we had that happen, but it's like for specific cases and for a specific reason, not like habitation gone. And so um, you may need to start with the council member, contacting the council member and check with her. But the only way a project be removed is by a mayor and council approval. So okay, they so have to do that. All right. So there is a process. We understand how we'd go about it. Thank you. Yeah. I don't. I don't have anything else. I appreciate your time, and we'll probably be in touch. If you're aware. Greg. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. No uh, problem. Uh -huh. Greg, there is there is another question in chat. Okay. Um, the, uh, their driveway apron is 21 feet wide. Will the new driveway be the same size? Yes. So, um, okay, gonna... 11 foot is the minimum width uh, for yes, a single sir. driveway. But if you have uh, a wider driveway, it's going to match the width. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Thank you, Greg. And yeah, she said thank you. Okay. All right, did everybody on the phone that wanted to ask a question get to ask a question? We don't have any more uh, call-in users left, so. Okay. They've all uh, disconnected at this point. Okay. And no, no more chat questions? There are not any more chat Okay. Well, uh, thank you to everyone who attended today. Um, so here's my contact information. Uh, feel free to reach out to me by phone or by email. If you have any follow-up questions or comments, maybe one you didn't think of during the meeting, um, I'm going to leave the slide up for just a little bit um, so that you can have a chance to copy it down if you wish to. But other than that, I hope everyone has a good evening, and I look forward to hearing from you.